if you are worried about money, if you're always upset about money, I heard one of my students said, I think for me, money can be like an assassin with a black coat, you know, a, suit, a hat, like he has a gun in his pocket. <laughs> I think he's going to shoot me if I don't pay the bills. So uh, money could be a scary monster if you let it. And it's interesting. Money is neutral. But the way you've been brought up and the way you associate with money uh, definitely defines who you are. We all have an emotional response when it comes to money. Some of us are anxious when it comes to our finances. Some of us spend freely without a second thought. Whatever the case, we all have complex relationships that affect our personal well-being as well as our relationships with others. Hi, I'm James Battiston from MoneyWise, and today I'm speaking with Ken Honda, Japan's best-selling Zen millionaire and author of Happy Money, The Japanese Art of Making Peace with Your Money. Ken expounds the concept of happy money and encourages each of us to ask ourselves if our money brings joy in our lives. Welcome, Ken. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much, James. I'm so excited and I feel so honored to be here. Great. So um, you've identified seven money personality types, uh, each with a distinct set of characteristics. Mm -hmm. Could you tell, just tell me briefly what those are and which do you encounter most often in your day-to-day -day life? <laughs> Yeah, so um, in my 20s, I did uh, accounting work, and it's so interesting to see how people, uh, people's lives and characters show up on numbers, on tax return form. Uh, some people are spenders. They love spending. So if uh, I give you, or if I give the person $100, uh, she or he will spend it in, in 30 minutes. And on the other hand, if you're a saver, she or he will go directly to the bank and deposit the money and don't touch it and also the gamblers <clears throat> they just gamble their money so right after they get the money they probably go um, to some gambling facility or online internet uh, gambling and also there are money makers uh, who are obsessed with man, many uh, money making ideas so when you get together with him or her they always talk about cryptocurrency or whatever uh, the thing is they they, are, uh, they love to make him uh, they love to uh, make money. And the other one is uh, in different types. Uh, those people are like hippies. Uh, they are okay without thinking of money. Uh, one of my friends is a, a friend is a, a college professor. He didn't know he lost his wallet for a week. And the police, and somebody gave it, uh, you know, put, uh, bring it to the police. So the police uh, traced him and uh, traced, uh, the police called him. Uh, Sir, do you know you you just dropped your wallet a week ago and he didn't know <laughs> because <laughs> he doesn't spend money. So there are so many um, uh, characters and I'm saying I'm not judging anybody. You know, we are all different. Absolutely. How did you come to define these personality types? Was it just through personal experience, day to day interaction or yeah, what's the science behind it? So um, in my 20s, I was uh, doing accounting work with my father and with my brother, who were tax accountants. And one time I, I was at the conference table, and uh, the father passed away, so the mother and three kids. So the, the eldest son, son is dressed like a, a Wall Street type of person, you know, uh, short hair, a nice suit. Uh, he seems to be very successful. And the second one is a, a daughter, and uh, she is somewhat uh, very quiet, and she doesn't look like uh, a daughter of a wealthy family. And the third one looks like a hippie. And I couldn't believe that these, these brothers and sisters are born and brought up in the same household, but they turn out so different. And then it, it hit me, and I asked around my friends, and it's so true that your brothers and sisters are different money types from you. So um, we, uh, I don't know if we were born that way or definitely uh, grew, grew apart each other. That's why we have a hard time understanding each other. Uh, absolutely. It's, um, some of it is the nature versus nurture, right? And we'll, we'll get on to that a bit uh, later. Right. Um, so me personally, I, I'm a fairly pessimistic person and I would be uh -huh. identified as a worrier most likely. Oh, when that's right. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, if you were to identify one way in which people can change their attitudes about money and develop a, a happier relationship with it, 
what would it be? And like, is it possible for me to change my, you know, my habits? Of course, of course you can. But at the same time, we've been this way for 30 years, 40 years, and sometimes 50 years, right? Since you're probably like six or seven, we have developed uh, habits of thinking. So it's like uh, if you tend to think negatively, you can turn ar- turn around and then start thinking positively as of now. And money is the same thing. And it's, uh, um, it's uh, root- rooted in a deep place in you. Mm-hmm. So that means that if you are a spender, uh, you have this urge to spend. You want to have parties. You want to go experience the world. You have the, fe- the uh, biggest fear of missing out. Whereas warrior, they have the same fear, but they, they worry about money. So that's why they save money. And the gamblers the same way. <clears throat> they want to multiple their money. So they don't have to worry about money for the rest of their life. So <clears throat> it's how we react to money. And we have to uh, start thinking uh, about uh, where we are. And if we want to change uh, who we are, of course we can change. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so building on that, when it comes to personal relationships, like couples, um, yes. romantic relationships, like there are a lot of surveys out there and something mm-hmm. like 44% of couples openly admit to arguing about money. <laughs> um, how can your money personality affect your romantic relationships, your interpersonal relationships. And, yeah. what, you know, would you be able to say like, hey, mm-hmm. this couple should are great together. These two, types, <laughs> these two should just stay clear. <laughs> yeah, James, you keep asking great questions. Thank you. So this is my favorite subject. If you don't stop me, I, I can talk for hours. So uh, because this is fascinating, you know, um, I've done a lot of um, money counseling in my li- life and uh, in my career. And it's so fascinating because the same reason that got them together could be the same reason for divorce. For example, the spender type and money maker type, they are attracted to one another because spender needs somebody who finance her, finance him. And also a uh, money maker, they want to enjoy life, but they're so busy making money. So they are attracted to one another. The spender thinks he or she will be such a perfect person to finance me, thank you. You know, I'm 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 in love with you because you're giving me money to spend. So the money maker, who are usually boring because they all talk, talk about money and business, they don't know how to enjoy life. So the spender people say like, "Hey, go out, James. You know, life is fun." So uh, he or she would take you to the interesting restaurants or exotic places on on your account. <laughs> so, but at the beginning of the relationship, uh, they are attracted to one another because. From the uh, money maker type uh, perspective, the spender type is so uh, they know how to have fun. From the spender type, he or she, uh, the, uh, the money maker type, uh, gives security, so they are attracted to one another. But after five years, as you know, uh, the, the spender type thinks he's so stingy. You know, he talks about money and business. He's such a boring but guy. Why did I marry this person? And from a, a money maker perspective. I think I'm going to go bankrupt one way or another if I'm married with this person. So uh, you have to really work out the issues. You know, life has to be enjoyed, but you have to pay for the bills. So you have to have the right balance. So you're in the same boat as a couple. But uh, we often think that uh, the problem we have is the other um, one causing. So we have to really realistic about the money we make and the money we spend. Hmm. Uh, So that leads into my next uh, question. Uh, What would you identify as like a a first step in really creating better communication in a relationship when talking about your money? That's uh, also a great question. So first of all, can you identify your relationship with money? My favorite question is if money was a person, who would it be? For happy people, Money can be a nice, gentle, generous person who just offers help. If you want to go overseas, money will be right there. And and with the assist of Google and Expedia or uh, other, you know, uh, internet services, he or or she or it can, the money can just uh, give you the access to your airplane tickets, the hotels and the cars in in a matter of minutes. So, uh, 
money can be such a beautiful、uh, friend to you. But if you are worried about money, if you're always upset about money, I heard one of my students said, I think for me, money can be like an assassin with a black coat, you know, a, sip, a hat, like he has a gun in his pocket. <laughs> I think he's going to shoot me if I don't pay the bills. So、uh, money could be a scary monster if you let it. And it's interesting, money is neutral. But the way you've been brought up and the way you associate with money、uh, definitely defines who you are. So, yeah, so understanding our own personal perception of、mm-hmm. money is the first step in creating a better communication with our partner. Yes.、Uh, Interesting. Yeah, absolutely.、Um, your book, Happy Money, and you've、mm-hmm. again touched on this, centers around how money is effectively neutral, it's a form of energy.、Mm-hmm. And you know, how we give and receive it in our relationships,、uh, it affects our relationship with money and our perception、yes. of it. Um, financial trauma can have a profound impact on how an individual relates to money.、Mm-hmm. How could someone who has experienced、uh, a financial trauma overcome it and achieve happy money? So、uh, that's why I, I think friendship and partnership are so important because,、uh, you know, we've, all, we've only known about our family,、uh, the family that we grew up in. So for some people, Uh, m- money is there. If you are、uh, born into a, a wealthy,、uh, fi- financially comfortable family, money was never even a topic in your house. But if you're born and brought up in a, a challenging,、uh, financially challenging families, all your parents talk about is how, how, how to pay the bills or they argue over money. So、uh, we come from different backgrounds and, and、uh, with our friends who may be financially well off, who had a hard time. But、uh, through them, we can understand each other. And that's what's so fascinating about uh, uh, what I do. I feel so honored to be able to touch people in a deeper way because、uh, we all feel the pain. You know,、um, all of us felt some kind of pain you know, when we were growing up. If you don't have money, if you didn't have money in the family, you probably felt shame and embarrassment and, and, and guilt that、uh, it's so. Frustrating that all your all your kids used to have bicy you know、uh, have bicycles. Nowadays it became a PlayStation and probably like a new iPhones. But the same thing, you know.、Um, I, when I was younger, I think I wanted to have、um, a mountain bike, but my parents said that's too expensive for you. They meant it's too big for you. I'm not. You're not. You know, big enough. Uh, they're they're right because you know with the bike I just had into a very big accident I almost died so they're right I wasn't ready but for me I wasn't worth it so it was such a big blow so、um, I'm sure we had all the、uh, terrible experiences that our parents said no to our ballet lessons summer camps and、uh, little toys or whatever we wanted、uh, our, our dreams are crushed one way or another. Yeah, so it, it's understanding the perspective that、mm-hmm. everyone brings to money and their finances. Yeah, and looking how, looking at situational、uh, experience. Absolutely.、Right. Absolutely. So, one of the things that's been on a lot of people's mind of late, especially in the, North America, is、um, the inflation and fears of a recession.、Mm-hmm. Um, The US Bureau of Labor and Statistics just released their findings, and the rate of infl- inflation declined to about、uh, 6.3%. But still, the feds are increasing、uh, the rates, and the cost of food and services are rising, and it's causing a lot of anxiety.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, th- this is kind of a, a, a multi part question, but what can we do in order to? Reframe our perceptions about these difficult times to have a more optimistic outlook. And、mm-hmm. you know, do you have any tips on how we can prepare and、mm-hmm. survive a recession emotionally?、Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm writing a book、uh, on this、uh, how to stop worrying about money. And in that, I'm writing a few tips.、Uh, for example,、uh, when we feel the worries of money, it's actually we're not worrying about money. Uh, we are worrying about the future without any money. It's very different.、Uh, and, and I've known and interviewed many millionaires and billionaires in my、uh, career, and、uh, they've, been into, they've been through 
bankruptcy at least like two or three times or near bankruptcy. It's I, I call it near death experience, uh, near bankruptcy experience. <laughs> they, they went through a hard time without any money, but they were okay. Uh, so, uh, but for most of us, we so worry that uh, what if we cannot pay the rent or what if we miss out the mortgage or what if we cannot bring food on the table uh, because money is so uh, tied up with our own survival. So we feel like if we don't have money, we'll be dead. So uh, think about this and then we have to separate no money situation and not, uh, you, you will not be dead because you know, no money situation doesn't kill you. Uh, the worry about the no money situation kills you. A lot of people commit suicide because they, they feel desperate. They, they, they lose hope. But in fact, if you have no money, a lot of people help you. You know, your, your parents, your brothers and sisters, your friends will be there. They'll make sure that you won't fall. But we have a hard time asking for help. We are good at giving help uh, to our friends and families. How is it going? What can I do for you? But when we need help, we just feel so uh, embarrassed and shameful. So instead of uh, um, asking, asking for help, it's, it seems easier to take our own lives, which is very tragic. So I think uh, when you uh, uh, have a money uh, situation, a tough money situations, that is a time to learn to be vulnerable and start asking for help. And I think especially in North America, it's harder. Uh, in other cultures, probably many of you know, don't know, uh, money is a uh, more openly talked about subject. Um, uh, like in, in my college graduate uh, reunion, we openly talk about how much money we make to each other. And we congratulate, oh, James, so you're making that much? God, I'm so jealous. You're doing so great. Uh, what, you know, how's your son doing? So that's part of our daily conversation. But in North America, after 20 years of college graduation, if you get, if you, you know, get grabbed by somebody, uh, you know, fat, uh, like a long distance friend and say, hey, James, how much are you making this year? You know, probably it's not a polite question, I guess. You have an immediate reaction to it. It's your back goes like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so there's so much shame and guilt around money. That's why even about, among closest friends, in North America, people don't talk about um, money. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's a cultural thing because, you know, you can shock Japanese businessmen um, by asking about their sexual life. And you'll see the same fear and embarrassment right, right. Know, when you grab American businessmen about their financial life. So we have a, 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 taboos in funny areas and we can heal them. Yeah. And it's that process of healing that I think the acknowledgement, as you say, the asking for help, that's the critical first step. And we have to open ourselves up and be vulnerable and accept our vulnerability to make our lives better and, you know, enrich the lives of others in the process. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this leads into the next thought. Like, we live in a very digital age where we encounter images of people living wealthy lives on TikTok, Instagram, and you know, it, some of us have the feeling that we need to keep up with the Joneses, as it were, or um, we have a fear of missing out, as you identify in your book. And you also identify the myth of scarcity, uh, how we believe that we need something because other people have it. Um, what advice would you give to an individual who felt they need to maintain uh, a certain financial image that they can't actually afford? Or like, how could a, a compulsive spender personality, um, how can they alter their habits and their relationship with money? No, it's not so easy because it's a form of addiction. You know, um, if you, your friend has a drinking problem, uh, you can say, oh, you, should, you better stop drinking. <laughs> it's easy to say. But, you know, there's this uh, urging energy, uh, rushing energy in you. That's what give, uh, push you into uh, alcohol or some other uh, abuses. You know, the light one is coffee or sugar. But, you know, we're all pushed. Um, and we have all have some kind of addiction. You know, I have this, I, ha I have to confess, I have this, this addiction as a book writer. I keep writing. My hands are shaking. I have to keep <laughs> writing, you know. My father's, my father's alcoholic, so um, 
I, I try to find a healthier addiction. Uh, it runs in my family. So I came out, uh, you know, I, I thought the book writing is, is the healthiest addiction I could have. So instead of drinking, I'm writing. So, you know, we all have some funny things here and there. So we have to admit that we have this energy of uh, stuck in us. So we have to let it go through sports or through uh, whatever, whatever we do uh, to stay healthy. Absolutely. So um, we have to just uh, not uh, work on the result, but we have to work on the cause of why we need to spend, why I need to gamble, why I need to make more money, even though you're a billionaire. So you have to really look inside. That's why I teach uh, Zen techniques to find the true balance in you. Uh, otherwise, we are so stuck in this more is better. I need more. I need to impress people more. Uh, but real, you know, happy millionaires, they don't uh, have fancy cars because they don't need to impress other people. So presently, there's a lot of pressure for individuals to save for retirement. That's an, I think it was more of a North American thing. I'm not sure about other cultures, but uh, there's like statistic that you need at least $1 million by the time you retire in savings to, you know, maintain a, your lifestyle and whatnot, to live comfortably as it were. Um, and expectations can create a great deal of anxiety and pressure on people. Um, w what thoughts do you have about people saving for retirement? And you know, what steps can they take to relieve some of the anxiety that they feel because of the pressures? Right. Now, I recommend a book uh, titled Die With Zero. And it's such a beautiful concept, you know, how about, how do you feel if, if you die with zero in your bank account? Uh, my friend's mother passed away a few years ago, and she is a master that way. She calculated how much it's going to cost for her funeral, the last uh, hospital bills. And then um, she was not a wealthy person. So she gave out a few thousand dollars to all her grandchildren. And then uh, she made sure that everything is in my in the, uh, the first drawer, and she passed away. And when my friend calculated how much she had, she had only $7.80. And I think it's a master of money. But we are so afraid. And unfortunately, most of us died either or in debt or we have uh, some money in the bank account. So... It's because we don't trust uh, our government, it, we don't trust our friends, we don't trust our family members. That's why we seek security in our savings and, and stocks. But in fact, if you have more than 50 friends, I, I'm just telling this to um, all, the, uh, all the people, you can go number one, uh, friend number one, and ask him or her to stay for a week. And you can do the same thing for number two, after 52 weeks. You can come back to your friend number one, and then for the rest of your life, you're financially okay. I'm just joking, but at the same time, my point is that if you have enough friends and uh, relatives that uh, in case of emergency, they'll support you. If you know that will be the truth, you don't have to save anything, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a very good point. And thank you for sharing that story. It's yeah, it, it gives a good perspective on how our relationship with money can affect happiness. Um, so as a parent, uh, how can I go about teaching my kids to have a healthy relationship with their money? <laughs> yes, that's a beautiful question. I wrote a few books on how to raise a happy money child. Uh, the number one thing is, um, the parents have to enjoy money, both receiving and giving. So if, uh, if if your parents are doing what they love to do and receive money, your kids would think, wow, you're doing what you, my, my dad and mom or my dad and dad or mom and mom are doing what they love and still they, they get money. Wow, that's so cool. I want to find out what I, what I love to do so I get money. And I, and I love to set, spend my money on the things I love. So that is the best education. So if you have a better relationship with money, uh, your kids will have a better relationship. But if uh, you are having a terrible time and then if you're um, lousy with money, uh, you cannot say, don't do what I did. <laughs> it's not a happy education. So just, uh, um, just uh, have, a, have a better relationship with money and enjoy life and make both ends meet. 
And if you have something extra every month, you can invest and then uh, start、um, just having a, a certain security. You know, I, I, I'm not recommending the minimum lifestyle or I'm not recommending no savings. Of course, you should have, have savings because you know, it's a little comfort. But don't rely on that、uh, for your emotional security because that could drive you into moneymaker, gambler, and all the other things. Ken, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. It has been a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Anytime, because this is my joy. So,、um, thank you so much for the opportunity、um, to share what I know about happy money. 